Hello and welcome to the William Ward Show. Obviously, I'm Will, or William. And in this first episode, we speak to DJ producer Jonah Sue. He's made Black Magic. It's got over 53 or 57 million streams on Spotify. We talk about his life from Germany to Amsterdam, his music top charting in the UK, going on Love Island, and much, much more. So please, if you are there listening right now, behold for this episode. It was a great one. Enjoy. And if you really want to get involved, www.williamwar.co.uk to get your sweatshirts, jumpers, you've got different designs on there. Use code WAR10 for two items or more. And let's get into the show. Hello, Jonas Sue, and welcome to the William Ward Show. How are you doing? Hey, Will. Nice to meet you. I'm nice to meet great. you too. Nice to meet you too. So tell us about your journey, your music and jo- uh, like your music and your journey together. Like how how Ooh. did it come and how did it arrive to this destination now? It's, it's a long story. Um, <laughs> you want the long version or the short version? <laughs> well, you choose, you choose. Uh, I, I try to keep it short, but okay. basically, um, yeah, I've been doing music uh, for a long time in my life. I started playing drums when I was five. Um, I grew up in like musical household, and, uh, you know, having music around, hearing a lot of classical music. Um, and I started banging my <laughs> mother's kitchen pots when I was like four and didn't stop until she was like, okay, fine, you're getting drum lessons. So she sent me to learn to play the drums. And uh, yeah, that was basically my start where I got in touch with making music personally. and. It went from there to just like learning all other instruments, trying to pick up the guitar, you know, just curiosity about other things. And there was a piano at home. So, you know, I would eventually walk around and just play the piano, <laughs> just try to figure it out. Um, and in the end, I, I studied music when I was, uh, when I graduated from high school, I went to a music college and studied drums there as well. And from there got into writing songs and producing music, uh, playing in bands a lot. I toured a lot as a musician and then started producing the bands I was playing in. Um, And then, yeah, that was the close step to becoming like a studio musician. I was doing a lot of studio work, uh, wrote a lot of music for commercials and movies. uh, And then eventually, I think about five years ago, I just like, became a full-time songwriter and producer. And from then on, I started my own artist project, Janasu. <laughs> and uh, yeah, now now we're here. Uh, and uh, the last year has been very exciting. I wow. mean, it's, uh, it's a bit crazy. Uh, I've, I've, I've written hit songs before, but it, it is so different when it's your own project. Uh, you know, like I, I've written songs that other artists release and they became big. But obviously, then your name is not uh, the label on top of it. So to actually do it with my name on top means so much more. It's just like you're so much more in touch with the people. And that's so much more rewarding getting messages. People be like, oh, man, your song is the only thing that puts my daughter asleep. <laughs> uh, that, that really happened. And what a great like, oh. feeling, though. What a great feeling yeah, of exactly. like someone messaging you saying, oh, look, your song has made a huge impact in my life and in my family's life. Like, I think I think that's just amazing, amazing touch. Like, like you just said, putting your name on top of your project, your own project, your own work. That must be the best feeling, especially to get all that success from going from banging drums or banging pots and pans in, in your mother's kitchen to yeah. <laughs> to drum lessons and then college. And then tell us about college, actually. How did, what made you think, yeah, right, I want to go to college and, and actually study music? Uh, what was that sort of thing like? Because there's a lot of artists that didn't take that route to go to college. Um, but then yeah. again, yeah, t- t- let's hear, let's hear what you've, it's, a, it's an about. interesting question. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think a big part of that is definitely, uh, the idea of when you graduate high school, you go to college or university mm. and, uh, basically it's kind of like a, it makes it legit to go to your parents and be like, <laughs> I'm going to study, I'm going to study music. You know, uh, it, it's, it's easier to do that than 
just be like, uh, I'm going to be a musician because yeah. uh, in the end, it also gives you a huge infrastructure uh, within the music uh, business, but also just, you know, a, a gigantic network with other musicians and like-minded people that struggle with the same things. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it was it was kind of an obvious choice um, in the sense of studying over just doing it. Um, yeah. but obviously a lot of people hesitate to do it. Mm. And I had a, I had a time, uh, I was always pretty sure I'm going to study music when I was younger. And when I was 16, I think I got into, uh, like a uni for, for youngsters basically. So I, I, uh, already went to college and I had some lessons there. And at that time I was really not ready for it. Uh, it was way too serious for me. Music was always fun. Uh, it was about, you know, expressing yourself and, and Definitely. not about hard work, you know, mm, <laughs> and then yeah. you, you, you show up there as a teenager and actually people are, you know, giving you a lot of work and <laughs> I, I really didn't like that. Uh, so I think between the age of 16 and 19, I was like, ah, I'm, I'm done with it. I, I just like, I'll just do music for myself for fun. Definitely. And uh, it just kind of happened that I, and in the end, went to study, which, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm super happy that it happened. But I just applied for for uh, universities without being too serious about it, mm. and then I got invited to the schools. And it's it's not so easy to get invited to the schools in the first place. Yeah. And then I went to to do auditions, and and they took me, and it was like, it was kind of like reaffirming of like, okay, maybe I should do this. Uh, and I should be serious about it and uh, make it my profession. And I'm happy I did. Good. No, well, it paid off. <laughs> it definitely paid off. Um, I think that's amazing because I think that, uh, like you said before, a lot of people have a lot of hesitation because I, I've always been told that because I went to university to st study audio and music technology. Um, okay, cool. And so it's like, is it a serious subject until you get down to the nitty gritty sort of um, kind of elements about it? I think, I think it's just crazy. So tell us about, obviously you you do electronic music. I'm precisely slap house. I, I'm thinking, right. Um, and lots uh -huh. of different sort of genres of electronic music, sub genres, I should say. Um, yeah. Yeah. So tell us about how, obviously you said about classical music and obviously it was it mainly classical music in college or was it, was it just. So I studied jazz actually. Jazz, wow. Uh, yeah. So it's very different. It's a, it's a bit, it's a long journey as well. Oh, um, transition. <laughs> yeah. A lot of transitions, but in the end, you know, uh, music is music. And I, I personally really believe in music isn't bound by genres and it's, yeah. I'm, 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 I think I'm a big fan of like music that has grooves as a drummer, yeah. you know, like I love bass and drums, how they work together. And if you look at it, you know, like electronic music is not so different from disco and not so different from funk and yeah. soul yeah. and not so different from, you know, it, it derives from jazz and it's all about groove. And, and the other thing that I'm a huge fan of is songs. And, you know, if you have a good song, it doesn't matter if you, if you play it with a guitar and you get a Beatles song or you you heavily produce it in, into like a electronic music jacket and uh, mm -hmm. you get like a slap house banger. Yeah. It's still, <laughs> it's still about the song in the end, you know, and whatever works for that specific song as well. Definitely. So, uh, yeah. I do a lot of different music, you know. I mean, my artist project is uh, very electronic music based because I love that. Uh, mm -hmm. But I also, I, I love a lot of music. I I produce a lot of Brazilian music, a, little, yeah. a lot of pop music, whatever comes my way. Um, no, um, uh, I mean, that's as awesome. long as it's good music. Yeah, no, of course, of course. Like I think there's always, I always have that thing of, well, I always ju I I produce music, but not as on the scale as you. But I think there's always that thing in the back of my mind thinking, is it actually good? Do you ever get that feeling like, oh, is it actually good music? Does it come down to the melody? <laughs> is it come down to the mix? Is it come down to, you know, the chord progression is or the structure of the track? Is it always plays on the back of my head, and it's just yeah. like ah, it's so frustrating. No, um, in 
that's uh, no different with me. I think that's like an <laughs> ongoing struggle. Obviously, you create something, and and uh, there's a there's a healthy part of criti criticism while you create. You know, you want to yeah. push your limits. Definitely. But at the same time, if you doubt everything, and uh, it can hold you back, and that's something I think everybody struggles with. I mean, <laughs> I, everybody I work with struggles with exactly that. Um, yeah. So there's, there's, you know, like you said, there's so many different elements, like the melody, the lyrics, uh, chords, arrangements. And, and then in the end, music is something so holistic. Like, <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you like a song, you just like it. You don't that, care that, about the melody. You don't care true. about the lyrics. You're just like, oh, I like this. <laughs> no, it's, it's really random. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. That is so true. So uh, I did obviously did a bit of research about you. And oh. obviously, uh, you, I believe it's you're from Mannheim in Germany, right? Correct. Yes. Correct. Cool. So, and then you moved to Amsterdam. Is that is that is that correct? So, what what made you transition? What made you make the move? Like, do you? think living in a country changes the way you think about things and the, your work ethic? Does it, does it change most your mentality? Definitely. I think most definitely. The reason I left, I mean, I knew I wanted to just like have a different experience and move to a different uh, city, not necessarily country, uh, but like I said before, I applied to some music schools and one of them was the Amsterdam Conservatory. Yeah. And uh, they told me if you want you can study there and I never expected to get into the school uh, so once they told me I was like sure I'll go there and do it <laughs> and if you I mean I was I was 19 I think so you don't think too much about it what that actually means you just you just do it <laughs> and um, I'm happy I did but it definitely changes a lot of things I mean I grew up in Germany but I wouldn't say I'm completely German because most of my adult life I did live in the Netherlands, yeah. but neither am I Dutch. So <laughs> there's definitely something that changes in your DNA. You're surrounded by different cultures. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's good though. It's good. It's healthy, I think, to experience different countries, different cultures, languages 100%. as well. I think it definitely helps you grow as a person. Um, 100%, yeah. Do you think... Uh, would you recommend to other people to uh, go to a different city or a different country to find your dreams? Yes. Or, yeah, that, great. You got straight yes I, right there. <laughs> yes, yes, 100%. I, love I, that. Think, I love that. I think if, if everyone in the world, and uh, let's not forget it's a luxury as well, but if everyone mm. in the world would travel more, I think the world would be a better place <laughs> that, because that is... uh, people would understand each other a bit better and uh, reflect in a different way about themselves and, and their lives. And, and their background basically um so yeah i can recommend everyone and and i think there's a big difference between doing like a tourist trip that's yeah. also traveling but you can also really stay in your bubble but to live in a different place and you know be open to experience different cultures and uh that definitely expands everyone's horizon and i can only definitely. encourage that love that i love that so I interviewed Felix. You did a track with yes. Felix, uh, Stay great. High, um, a few episodes, well, a few months ago. Um, and obviously that was with Soundcore and now I'm doing my own thing. It's crazy. Um, so tell us about, you know, you, you've remade that song. Is it, I discussed with him about how there's a lot of remakes and, and uh, redesigns of each song, like past songs now. Do you think that, it's easier to market a song which has been changed or or made it current, modern or modernized the sound of that past track to be well amazing. Do you think? Do you think it would be easier to market that song in this day and age compared to if you just did a cover, let's say? Uh, yeah. I mean, the reason i mean the story how we did it is is also quite random because he just sent me like a snippet so felix just sent me a snippet <laughs> of him singing the song and i was like this is amazing we should release this so it just happened without like a, a strategy or a plan um but obviously it's uh my my ambition was then to not do a straight cover uh yeah. version of it because that's already been done in yeah. a way yeah. And yeah, if you do your own spin, give it your own spin, then that's, 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 a, you know, that can be fun. 
uh, I think already because it was him singing it that changed a lot, a lot in, yeah. in like the vibe the song was in. Uh, and then there's also the production that is quite different. Mm. Um, but obviously, like it's a great song. So shout out oh, to Tov Lo who who wrote it and and actually like we we got there okay to release it. Um, oh wow! Because yeah, you have to you have to ask that. Yeah. yeah. Did you think that's quite difficult to actually get the permissions these days? I know, like like having that sort of name, you're putting your own name onto it. But then again, it's quite difficult to get that sort of copyright issue like you've got loads of copyright issues these days in terms of copying tracks or even yeah. remaking it do you think how do you go about doing that <laughs> uh well uh i have somebody do it oh okay <laughs> lucky it's just good <laughs> like, luckily i mean you can ask you, you can ask directly yourself but in this case my publisher did it i think yeah um also because uh the song is also published by my publisher so one of the writers is uh part of sony Hmm. um so it was it was easy in that way because it was directly through the publisher but labels can do that as, as well and uh if you do it just a cover license uh basically a, a straight uh replica of the melody and lyrics then it's it's fairly easy uh but if you want to edit it and you know arrange it differently you have to ask for permission because you're basically changing the work yeah. Um and that That's can true. be more difficult. I had I had another song where uh it got rejected. And uh, I mean fair enough, it's it's their choice, mm. it's their song. True. They should be allowed to choose what happens with it. Yeah, no, 100%. Um going on from that, like if has there, have you ever thought of like the one artist that you haven't worked with yet that you'd want to work with? Like what's your biggest dream, like your biggest Ooh. collaboration you would like to work with? I would love to have a song with Dua Lipa. Oh, I'm huge, yeah. I'm a huge fan of her voice and <laughs> and she's and just the sound of her voice is so special. Yeah. And uh, I really like her as an artist and what she represents and mm. I think actually her voice would be great for like a housey Definitely. you know, I she did like one kiss, you know, for example, that's just yeah. like yeah. without her the song wouldn't work. She makes she makes it work. She makes the lyrics work and uh that's amazing. Yeah, no, what a dream collaboration that would be. Yeah. You should try and reach out and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or I'm have confident. you already? Have you already, though? That's what we no, want to know. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Oh, but well, fingers crossed. I believe, I, I believe you know, if, if, if that's my dream and I, I will work for it for 10 years, it eventually can happen, I think. I Definitely. Think that's oh, I something that. that's... Uh, for everyone that thinks about studying music or whatever uh i think it's always good to dream and pursue those dreams and if it doesn't happen uh it doesn't happen and that's also fine but i think if you if you have a strong mindset and you you want to do that uh and I, i'm definitely going to pursue it i'm i'm going to ask for sure <laughs> no 100 you have to you have to do that you've yeah. got i think like following your dreams is it can be difficult but what advice would you give for people actually trying to succeed it doesn't have to be in music but in any craft like what what yeah. sort of advice would you give to for people to try to, like try to succeed in that certain area yeah it's, uh, it's I, I like what you said because I, I really think it doesn't matter what you do i, I think mm. if you if you want to be good at something it, it's very similar to each other like if you want to be a chef or craftsman mm. or even like a, a good broker or whatever yeah uh, it, it takes similar qualities and, and I think with success, uh, there's a big part of patience, yeah. not, of not giving up. And uh, I had a lot of moments uh, where I had to learn to be patient um, <laughs> because, you know, if you want to dream big and pursue those dreams, it's not going to happen overnight. I think I think uh, even when you're lucky, it doesn't happen overnight. Even Even if you look at like, young artists that break through like Billie Eilish, she already yeah. spent 10 years uh, as a kid pursuing that dream. <laughs> and people tend to forget it because they just see her popping out out of nowhere being 18 years or 17 years old. But uh, it's always hard work and it's always patience and, and eventually it will pay off, I think, you know. 
Yeah, no, 100%. I think that's a great bit of advice to take on board. I think just got to keep going and just keep pursuing. I think that's, that's great. I have no words for that, but um, <laughs> amazing. So I want to take a little break, take a little break from the questions a minute. Well, sure. these are all questions. So tell tell me something that no one else knows about you. Something weird that you do, maybe something you do in your spare time, weird hobbies. Like I, I do, I basically go outside and just pop plants in my garden. It's just, <laughs> it's just kind of a weird thing. But um, you got any weird hobbies like you like doing aside to music? <laughs> I, I do like cooking. I enjoy cooking, cooking yeah. a lot. Yeah, cooking and baking. I, I, uh, I bake my own bread. Oh, um, hi! I love that. I have my starter in the fridge and uh, <laughs> I have to feed my starter. Otherwise it dies. And uh, I love that. yeah, if I have time, if I have time, I, I bake. Uh, but baking takes a lot of time. It mm. takes like two days to to have the whole procedure. So uh, <laughs> recently I haven't baked as much, but uh, I really like it. I, I, I think there's something really rewarding in cooking and baking Definitely. that you actually is, is you just feed your yourself with good stuff <laughs> yeah definitely and, the and, good stuff i think um, and the best thing is still is eating i mean obviously yeah 100 percent. i love i love that i love that so what was your what would you be like your favorite dinner dish like what would you if you if i said mm. i was coming around your house and and i was like right jonas i want you to cook me something your favorite ultimate dish what would you cook Ooh, uh, difficult question <laughs> so I'm vegetarian. I don't eat meat yeah, or nor fish. Um, I think like an aubergine stew or something mm. like that. I, I like I like uh, very like like tasteful stuff. You know, like yeah. I'm a fan of like salty stuff and it doesn't have to be salty, but like flavorful. Flavor, yeah. Um, so I love veggies in the oven that just like cook there for two hours and really get like <laughs> intense veggie flavors. Uh, I love I love Asian foods. Uh, oh just, yeah, like good soy sauces and all of that. Um, yeah, maybe an aubergine that. stew. I, I would cook yeah. you an aubergine stew. Well, you might have to send me the recipe just in case. I love that. Oh, I will do. I'll Try do. it myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. So. Um, what would you what would you be your main goal like obviously your main goal in life like obviously you've got your music project is there is it all about music or is it about the i have this thing where self uh belief and self improvement um aside to money music anything it's just like my brain i have to keep productive i have to keep doing stuff i can't sit on the sofa and do nothing all day um or i just can't watch netflix for like three hours it just drives me insane i feel like i haven't done anything productive um what would you say your ultimate sort of goal is uh i think my goal now is to be uh yeah basically the opposite to be because I, I really recognize what you said. I mean, I, yeah. I, I worked a lot, uh, especially yeah. uh, spent a lot of time. And I, th I think I want to learn how to chill more. That's good. That's good. <laughs> and and uh, be just like, you know, fulfilled with, with what I have. Yeah. I mean, there's only so much you can gain from success. And, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, I love spending time with my friends and, and my girlfriend. Um, but, you know, really be able to just enjoy life. Because I think, you know, if you work all day, all, all every time, it's just, go, it's not going to fulfill you entirely. No, I think 100%. You, you also have to take care of your soul and, and your happiness in other ways. Um, and, and let's not forget that I'm, I, I really love what I'm doing. You know, I mm -hmm. love music. I'm obsessed with music and yeah. it's fulfilling, but it's not everything. That's, no, that's my goal to learn everything. <laughs> that's good. I think. I think um, that's what I was going to say. Fulfillment is is key. I think I get well. I think regardless what it is, success is fulfillment. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how hard you. Well, it's, it does matter how hard you're working, but I mean at a steady pace. Like learn to obviously be proactive, but then again, take a break when you need it, and and learn to relax in your own time. Just be you know? happy. Yeah, and there it is. Just be happy. Yeah. <laughs> that's the kind I mean, of the day. that's that's the uh, yeah, that's the most important thing in the end of the day. And I I feel I mean like with the culture 
mm. uh, we grow up in is so work related. Like you almost identify with your work, um, but then you go to uh, different places in the world. Uh, uh, like, I mean, just for an example, like I've been in, to Brazil yeah. and uh, people are just there chilling on the beach and they're so happy. And yeah. like sincerely happy, you know, not like pretending, but you no. know, they have so much joy in simple things. And that's something I really admire. No, the, I, I completely agree with you. I think, well, it's same with me. When I went to Portugal, I, well, I've been to Portugal many times, but the, the, the lifestyle difference in terms of everything is so much slower in the UK and America and Germany and, and, and places like that. I think everyone is very like, right. We need to go to work, work working all the yes. time, very fast paced, you know, it's not, it's not enough Definitely. breathing space. It's not enough downtime. It's just so fast. I think um, in countries like Brazil, Portugal, and I'm more relaxed. And it's just like, oh, as soon as I go there, I'm just oh, so relaxed. So nice. It's so nice to breathe. And it's so much more important <laughs> in life. It is. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, mentally, I think mentally, it's just so, so key to like yeah. have that. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about is your track, Black Magic. Yes. Tell me about that. this. <laughs> yeah, I thought you did. Tell, <laughs> tell me about this absolute hit. Currently, it's sitting on, I think, uh, 52 million streams on Spotify. Yeah. The last time I saw it. Um, tell what happened. Like, tell me the process. Tell me what happened behind this track to get to, you know, it's charted in the UK charts. It's it's absolutely massive over here. Yeah. Um, it's a long story. So I wrote the song with uh, two friends, uh, Rox and Shannon. Uh, they're songwriters and uh, Shannon actually sings the song. Uh, we, we worked loads together and one of the songs we wrote was Black Magic. And uh, yeah, originally we, you know, we just wrote it. And if you're a songwriter, you just basically work in sessions. So you meet up one day. Yeah. You're together the whole day and you write one song basically in that session. So uh, that day we wrote Black Magic. Um, at that time, I wasn't uh, doing much as an artist. So I was mostly working behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so we sent the song uh, around to some artists we had in mind while we wrote it. Um, but pretty quickly, you know, it just was one of many songs I've written and it was in my Dropbox with like all songs I've written. Yeah. Uh, and I was uh, basically just like lost in my Dropbox for quite a while. Oh, wow. Um, because, yeah, like I said, you just like have this inventory yeah. of lists and you, you, you keep forgetting what you did. Um, <laughs> and it took, I think, like two years after we wrote it. I, I, oh, wow. I just found it going through all songs I've written and I heard it. I was like, this is actually pretty good. And usually when you hear old stuff, it's like, oh God, this song. No, no, don't remind me of this song. Yeah. And, and I, I kind of like uh, liked it when I heard it uh, again. Um, and at that time, I was just like uh, working on new material for my own project. So I asked my co-writers like, yeah, do you mind if I put this out myself? Uh, I work it out. And they were sure, cool, uh, go for it. So I, I worked on the production and uh, yeah, it took maybe a couple of days to get everything in the place where it mm. was yeah but when it was done i was like okay this is actually pretty strong uh yeah you you know you can never have expectations or whatever but yeah you know kind of what's i i, I usually can imagine like okay this could work really well or this won't work or this is a tricky one and with this one i, I immediately felt like okay this could really take off mm. um but it was a very patient record. So I think yeah. everyone in the team, uh, so so my label, 3Beat Records, um, we've all been very patient. It it got it got released and it, it, it kind of immediately, well, got received pretty well. Um, but obviously at the time I released it, I was not like uh, a, a known, I'm not even now like a big name. So... You have a different you have different cards than Dua Lipa. So when Dua Lipa re re releases a song, uh, it's pretty obvious that people will notice and will talk about it. Um, so it was bubbling and growing for about half a year, I think. Um, 
and it it's really cool to see that it actually continuously grew like yeah. almost every day it streamed more Crazy. than the day before like not a lot but you know just like like it's growing slowly growing yeah. and and <laughs> reaching people and then there were several i think you know that was uh this year maybe in may where uh we all thought like okay this might this might break and yeah. top the charts not even like expecting it would be like a top 20 or a top 10 but you know like it might go, go into like let's hope maybe eventually can go to the top 40 and yeah. then there was just like random events happening that just like catapulted the song into like wow. yeah the, the top five eventually one of them was a uh, uh, Love Island sync. Um, yeah, I saw it. I was, was on TV and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> yeah. I know who that is. <laughs> that, that was a big, big thing for the song. I mean, the power of a show like Love Island where music is also very prominent mm. uh, is, is really, really strong. Um, and at the same time, it, it already had quite some traction on TikTok. Uh, yeah. People used it for all kinds of things. So their uh, secret mixture of favorite cleaning detergent <laughs> uh cleaning all kinds of love clothes like black magic <laughs> uh yeah it was it was it was wild and that is crazy. Uh, eventually i think you know people already knew the song uh before it got on love island yeah so when it went on love island people were like oh that's the song and it kind of triggered them to just see like listen to it again share it again and that that I think just like was like the the trop that that made it like break through. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. But it took yeah I think in the end seven months to break, which is uh, which is longer than most people and labels give to any song nowadays. Yeah. No, but that's what an achievement though. I, I bet you thought. Thanks. Well, uh, uh, congratulations. I, I would say that in all honesty, I think. Uh, what an amazing uh, what a masterpiece i think that the th the th think that your track was just in your dropbox and obviously it happens all the time like all my ableton tracks are just sort of archiving over time it's just it's just like you j the fact that you just went decided right i'm gonna go back and just have a look through all my old tracks that i've made and then you're thinking actually something sparked in your brain thinking that is the track that yeah that i need to just see what happens just what, see what happens with it do a production for it and then put it out i think that's amazing i think yeah, it's, it's, it's if crazy. that's two years and then you say it's seven months that's nearly three years like to yeah wow from the initial creation to like yeah it, uh, it, it takes time music yeah. industry in general takes time so yeah uh, that's true yeah but i i mean i think the 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 good story about the song is or like that's really reinsuring reinsuring for me and a lot of artists is that that nowadays the listeners have so much power mm. i think it constantly grew on apple music and spotify n not necessarily because it was pushed by uh, editorials you know by, yeah. by by themselves but just by people uh saving it sharing it it was very organic and I think that's that's also one reason why it took so long because like you know if it grows organic it also takes time, but in the end that's that's it's so amazing to see that apparently people liked it and apparently wow. people shared it and and it got to that point just you know by tra being transported by the music itself without you know th I mean campaigning it like like Definitely. a maniac. Yeah, no, I think I think it's better. I think it's better when you know that it's been mostly organic reach rather than paid promotion and and like yeah. you know like you said editorials and stuff i think i think that even that in itself i just think see it's even on my playlist like <laughs> i listen to it all the time it's crazy <laughs> just you. think that it's fine it's great i love it um but um yeah no i just think that it's such a an achievement and what i did want to ask is there any artist that you you probably are not allowed to say but is there anybody you're working with right now that is the next big thing possibly in your head in your uh, mind is there any artist you can leave possibly. maybe just a small I mean, small hit <laughs> i i have i have my next single coming out on uh the 26th Ooh. of november so that's in 
10 days is it oh. 10 days uh that's in yeah, yeah near enough yeah um and wow. that's gonna be uh together with chasey stewart okay cool uh who is incredible uh yeah i i, I was amazed uh, he's he's just an amazing singer yeah. uh we were in my studio and and he was singing i was like wow uh this is this is um, incredible and <laughs> i think he might be one that that will become pretty big pretty soon um wow, that's good and i'm super excited for this call there because also he yeah his music is very different than my music but i think we kind of uh, met on a, a great common ground with the song that we are doing together yeah um and i'm super excited to release it yeah good no i love that i love that um am i right by knowing Do, you're doing a few live shows this year is it this year or next year what shows are you doing again? I think are you doing the summertime? Uh, I'm doing the the winter the, time. The I'm winter time. Jingle. That's it. That's it. That's the, oh wow. How did doing you get? The you got the call up. Ball. You got the call up. Yeah. Well done. That's amazing. Yeah, um, that's great. I'm I'm looking forward to that. That's uh, 12th that's a, of December, I think. Um, it's a big show O2 in London. Yeah, I was I was there uh, the other day in Ministry of Sound. Oh, great! It's crazy. I think wow. But, uh, just wow i think yeah, yeah. i'm super excited <laughs> I, I have actually no idea like I, i'm i'm usually not nervous but i think i think i'll be nervous for that one. <laughs> oh, you've got it you've got it don't worry as soon as you're on those decks and playing your songs i think you'll be well yes you'll, you'll be fine <laughs> you'll, you'll be 110 percent fine it will, it will be um, fun for sure oh yeah no you gotta take make sure you take a lot of pictures and videos i think oh I will um, for sure what an experience i think do, do, do they just email you and just say oh yeah we want you to play for <laughs> the winter jingle ball well, yeah my, my my label hooked us up to do it so, oh that's amazing uh, he, yeah my label wrote like oh by the way uh you want to do the jingle bell ball like of course well, of <laughs> course i need to do it i want to do it yeah. <laughs> no wow um that's awesome yeah, it's um, amazing yeah, no. Um, well, Jonas Sue, thank you for coming on the William Ward Show podcast. I do Thanks appreciate you me. guys coming on. I got one last thing to ask you is is what would be your number one thing or advice would you give to anybody in the world right now that's listening? Ooh, so much responsibility. There is. <laughs> um, I think just uh, be yourself try to try to love yourself i mean this sounds super super jeezy but i think uh you know I, I, funny enough it got this goes back to black magic but i got so many messages from people that uh, wrote me that the songs means the song means so much to them yeah uh in in difficult times and i think i mean that's ultimately why i do music mm. is to comfort people and you know, and and myself including so i think you know that's still like the number one part is like just be happy uh try to find the the good good things in life and 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 you know it's it's not always easy but you know keep going and don't give up wow what a message. What a message to end this podcast on. I love that, Jonas. Way too right. epic. <laughs> yeah, way too epic. I love that. I love that. Right. Thank you for coming on this, uh, on the William Ward Show podcast, Jonas. You've been absolutely amazing. And guys, if you haven't listened to Black Magic, please go down below right now. Hit the link. Follow him on Instagram and follow us all. I think you have great music, Jonas. Well done. And once again, thank, thank you. you for coming on. Thanks so Cheers. much. Have a good day. You too.